the soul is a figure or the unmanifest figure. Now, figure is not just a sketch <laughs> like that. It is not in that sense. It is a form. It is a form. It is something which is kind of an, which has kind of acquired an individuality. It is a form, figure. Figure is not just a sketch, you see. Let me see what I said here. The soul is a figure of the unmanifest. Figure, a visible form or appearance of a person. A visible form or appearance of a person. The actual sense is in Latin, figura. It is from that it comes. A shape, form, or figure. It is not a sketch, it is a shape, a form, something, figura. It is coming from that, you see. Now, what he says is the soul is a figure of the unmanifest, visible form or an appearance of a person. It is unmanifest, which means invisible. It is that invisible which becomes visible as a figure. As a figure. In other words, what is not in manifestation so far has emerged, has entered into manifestation. And that is the soul. What is not in manifested so far, but which has entered into manifestation is the soul, and that you call a figure of the unmanifest. Now, Savitri is making a big statement here. She is talking, what is soul? Soul is a figure of the unmanifest. Then, what is mind? It labors to think the unthinkable. What cannot be conceived, what cannot be imagined, she imagines. Mind. And what is life? Life causes a mortal into birth. And body, it enshrines the illimitable. So the complete picture is there. Soul, mind, life, body. What is your word? <laughs> In four lines, she has described what we are and what are we here for. Our soul is an aspect of the unmanifest. Our mind is again an aspect of the unthinkable. Our life is an aspect of immortality into birth. Our body is the house for the illimitable. Although it is small, it is going to house the A small tiny second is there, that second is going to house the entire eternity. Small dot is there, that dot is going to house entire infinity. The soul is a figure of the unmanifest. The mind labors to think the unthinkable, the life to call the mortal into birth, the body to enshrine the illimitable. The world is not cut off from truth and God. That is her assertion. That is, her, there is no separation between this world and God. Because she has already stated here, what is soul, what is mind, what is life, what is body? If they are there like that, then how can you say that they are cut off from God? They are not cut off from God at all. Therefore, she is again asserting, look, today mind may look mind, body may look body, life may look life, etc. But actually, they are the aspects of God himself, of truth and God. They are not cut off from truth. And God. So she is really dismissing in one sentence the entire materialist philosophy. She is dismissing entirely the philosophy of Maya 
mayava that is illusion this is mithya this is not true this is false in vain thou hast stuck the dark unbridgeable gulf in vain thou hast built the blind and doorless wall man soul crosses through thee to paradise heavens and forces its way through death and night its light is seen upon our beings world so she is asserting that in vain thou hast dug so all this the world is not cut off it appears to be cut off because of you <laughs> because of you in vain thou hast dug the unbridgeable gulf thou hast built the blind doorless wall wall between truth and the world man soul crosses to the to paradise now this is again man soul crosses to the to paradise so this is the functional role of death it is death who is really promoting man to go to paradise to enter into paradise to live in paradise heaven sun forces its way to death and night they are helping death and night they are not superfluous they are not just antagonists they have got a certain role to play in the scheme of things again a need you see heaven sun again the same thing go back the same life only was until now my attempt to love to live but death is there also playing its part its light is seen upon our beings world my mind is a torch lit from the eternal sun my life a breath drawn by the immortal gale my body my mortal body is the eternal house my mortal body is the eternal house sarvesh is making a big statement <laughs> my body my mortal body is the eternal soul she has not yet transformed her body <laughs> but she is already sure that it is that which is going to really house the eternal in it my mind is a torch lit from the eternal sun my life a breath drawn with a mortal gale my mortal body is the eternal soul already the torch become the undying ray you see the torch has become the undying ray of the sun already the life is immortal force immortal be the house grows of the householder part and one so he has housed it he is growing now in his body itself house says thou to can never light the human mind and bliss can never invade the mortal's heart oh god descend or god descend into the world image you are making an unfounded statement i assert that truth can light the human mind i assert that bliss can invade the mortal heart i can assert that i assert that god descend into the mortal world he made so she is he is the denier she is the affirmative principle of existence not only affirmative principle but the affirmative dynamics to make it real in the meaningless void now she is again quickly tracing the course of evolution if if the so if in a meaningless void creation rose so the creation came out of the void if from a bodiless force matter was born if life would climb in the unconscious tree if green delight break into emerald leaves and its laughter of beauty blossom in the flower if sense could wake in tissue nerve and cell 
and thought sees the gray matter of the brain and soul pee from its secrecy to the flesh. How shall the nameless light not leap on men? And unknown power, and, and sorry, how shall the nameless light not leap on men and unknown powers emerge from nature's sleep? If all this has happened, from the void came this creation, out of it came matter, out of it came life, out of it came thought, then in the sequence, can you stop saying that this is the end and nothing will happen beyond that? Soul P from secrecy to the flesh. How shall the nameless light not leap on men? In the same manner it will come to men. And unknown powers emerge from the nature's sleep. Now, in the mathematical language, in the language of physics, this has happened, this has happened, this has happened, this has happened. Therefore, this will happen. <laughs> Therefore, this will happen. That is called the Lagrangian extrapolation. <laughs> Lagrange, the mathematician, French mathematician. You heard of him? No? Oh, you heard of him. Yeah. So, the same Lagrangian extrapolation, you see. This has happened, this has happened. So you go like that, okay, then it will happen like that. So she is using the Lagrangian argument to say that all these things have happened and therefore how can you deny this not happening? And soul peep from its secrecy to the flame. How should the nameless light not leap and men and unknown powers emerge from nature's sleep? Unknown powers emerge from nature's sleep. They are there already there, they are asleep, they have to open out. But at the same time, how shall the nameless light not leap on men? Coming down from above, leaping from above, and something emerging. She is making both the statements simultaneously. Something leaping from above and something emerging from here. <laughs> 